Since his head was nearly blown off by a roadside bomb in Iraq, our ABC News colleague Bob Woodruff has a special understanding of the obvious and hidden wounds of war. Tonight, his foundation kicked off the New York Comedy Festival with another star-studded stand-up for heroes. And we thought we'd follow one wounded warrior to the event to better understand life after deployment and how much one night of laughter can mean. <laughs> Funny where life leads, how one moment changes all the rest that follow. Tonight, he's on a red carpet. But almost exactly five years ago, Marine Lieutenant Andrew Kynard was on patrol. The smart, strapping son of a surgeon, Naval Academy grad, he was only six weeks into his first deployment when he took one fateful step and woke up a month later in a Maryland hospital. His first thoughts, where's my rifle? And why is my dad in Iraq? Then he realized half of him was gone. And as my point man turned around to sort of direct us to say, we need to go over this way, that's when the bomb exploded. It threw me through the air, I've been told, 30 feet or so up through the sky and I just fell into a crumple. We've seen it in Iraq and Afghanistan, how cutting edge battlefield medicine is saving troops that would have died in any prior war. Soldier, he has uh, amputated right foot, he has okay. three tourniquets in place. Today's soldiers actually put on tourniquets before the battle. The kind of grim self-awareness that makes them harder to kill than any warriors in history. And again? He's got an 18 in the right AC. Keep his arm down. So instead of families learning to live without a son, we have unprecedented numbers of men learning to live without arms or legs. In day-to-day -day life, people discount me so much for being in a wheelchair. I get talked down to and patronized on a regular basis. I, I get helped all the time when I don't need the help. You know, I'm a Marine officer. I help other people. I don't need help. The 75 surgeries changed his body, but didn't remove his pride or his drive. Andrew has hand-pedaled a couple Boston marathons and is now working on a law and MBA degree at Harvard. But he took the night off, flew to New York City for a little comedic therapy, something he believes in since that moment in the hospital when a fellow amputee made him laugh for the first time since the blast. When he came into my room and spoke with me, told a joke and laughed at himself and I laughed with him. I knew that I was going to be fine. Meanwhile, some of his fellow heroes are getting the kind of pampering they never imagined back at home, especially back at boot camp. Air Force Captain Therese French won the Purple Heart after a suicide bombing burned 30 percent of her upper body. This ear had been torn off and but they were able to get back on and I can't hear well at all. At all. And there are makeovers for the caregivers as well, a vital need realized by Lee Woodruff in those grueling days nursing Bob back to health. It was a woman pushing a wheelchair with a Vietnam veteran husband who said to me at an event, the guys get to go on vacation here, but we don't. We're still pushing the wheelchairs and we're still getting them around. And I realized, you know, what we have an opportunity to do is make part of this weekend just making them feel like queens for a day. As the crush of the red carpet intensifies, Captain Friends arrives looking radiant. <laughs> and there's Andrew. Well, probably most I'm looking forward to is hearing from the boss. You're a Springsteen fan? Yeah, yeah. I want to thank you for, for, for being here tonight. And it's one of those nights that hits the extreme emotional poles. There's joy. What's up, man? How you doing, man? You say it? Relief that they all made it home. You know, I'm happy to be here tonight for a number of reasons. One is that I'm alive. But then, lumps and throats, as Andrew remembers a Marine in his unit who just last month took his own life. You know, for some of us, the deployment never really ends. When we come back home, we suffer not just from injuries of our bones, our muscle. We suffer injuries of the mind. It's not a call for pity, but a reminder that support the troops is not a slogan. It's an action. And in the first four years, these nights have raised $11 million to help these warriors get their lives back. Going out tonight, I'm going to rock this joint. And for the grand finale, the boss. As a regular at this event, it's customary for Bruce Springsteen to auction off his guitar. 125000 against you, sir. Say 130. And tonight, that precious axe brought $160,000 to Bob and Lee's foundation. And the bidder, well, he gave that guitar. Is Andrew Kiner. Right here. Hey, thank you so much. Enjoy, my friend. Thank you very much.